Hi everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today we're talking about figuring out whether lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Now usually when we say this, we're not talking about looking at the lines to determine, we're talking about looking at the equations of the lines to figure this out. Because if you just look at the lines, it's pretty straightforward. So let's say I have two lines like this. They are not crossing each other and they are parallel. They, that is the definition. They have two lines, they're in a plane, they never cross. That is parallel. Then we also have perpendicular. Perpendicular lines are ones that form, if the ruler will let me rotate, there we go, the lines that form 90 degree angles to each other. You go, oh, okay, that's a 90 degree angle, that is perpendicular. So if we're just looking at these two, it's pretty easy to tell, but that's not what we're doing. It's important to remember this, that this is what these two things mean. Now, what we are interested in is mathematically, how do we tell if lines are parallel or perpendicular? Now, if it's parallel, if you'll notice, say if I have my little angle, my ruler here sets 45 degrees. I hold it up there, it's 45. Hold up there, it's 45. It's the same angle. What that means in our math terms is it's also the same slope, the same slope, the same rise over run, or also sometimes referred to as change in Y over change in X. If you need a review on slope and what those terms mean, there are links in the description below because we need to know that before we can really get into this. So please, if you have any questions on slope, watch that video first. Then over here on our uh, perpendicular lines, they are not obviously going to have the same slope, but theirs is a very special case. And I'm gonna slide over so we can just look at the perpendicular lines. And their slopes are going to be negative reciprocals. Negative reciprocals. What does that mean, right? <laughs> a negative reciprocal, also called an opposite reciprocal. It depends on your math book, both terms are used. Personally, I prefer opposite, but negative is also used. So what is a reciprocal? A reciprocal is when I have a fraction, it's supposed to be a four, and I flip it. The denominator goes to the top, numerator goes to the bottom. There is my reciprocal. This has a lot of purposes in math, but that's what this term means. You flip a fraction. Now an opposite reciprocal or negative reciprocal, the reason I prefer opposite is because negative, you think, oh, okay, so I make it negative. Mm, you're making it the opposite. So if this was positive and I wanna make the opposite reciprocal, this one would need to be negative. If my first one was negative and I wanted to make the opposite reciprocal, this one over here must be positive. So it's the opposite sign. So these uh, lines are going to have slopes that are the opposite reciprocal of each other. One important thing to note with reciprocals is when you're dealing with whole numbers, this will come up, I promise you. If you have, let's say three, and you say, what is the reciprocal of that? You're like, wait, that's, that's not a fraction. How do I do a reciprocal of a number that's not a fraction? You just said, flip the fraction. And I did. Well, three is the same as the fraction three over one or three divided by one. That's the form you need to flip. So if I was to make the opposite reciprocal of this, the one goes to the top, the three goes to the bottom, and this original one was positive, so this will become negative. So the opposite or negative reciprocal of three is negative one third. And the same goes the other way. If I started with, say, one like negative one seventh, and I wanted the opposite reciprocal of that. Seven goes to the top, one goes to the bottom. This one was negative, so this stays the same. It's just positive over here, it stays as it is. And seven over one is the same as seven. So the opposite reciprocal of negative one seventh is seven. That will come up. Okay, so when they start with these problems, they're going to ease you into it. And most of them are gonna start with lines that are in the format y equals mx plus b, where m is our slope and b is our y-intercept. If this is not ringing any bells, there's a link in the description below to a video to help you review this format because it's important. We're gonna be either using this format 
or converting things into this format is going to make it easy for us. All right, so they'll start you off with say something like y equals 2x plus 5 and y equals negative 1 half x plus 9. Are these parallel, perpendicular, or neither? The only thing, if it's in this y equals mx plus b format, and they both are, the only thing you need to look at, let's go blue, are these slopes. That's it. All this other stuff out here doesn't matter in these, if they're in the y equals mx plus b. Only thing you're looking at are these slopes. We go, oh, two and negative one half. If the lines are parallel, those numbers will be the same. They are not, these lines are not parallel. If it's perpendicular, they will be opposite reciprocals. Okay, what's the opposite reciprocal of two? Two is the same as two over one. So to make the opposite reciprocal, this is a positive, so it's gonna become negative. Two goes to the bottom, one goes to the top. Negative one half, hey, that is the opposite reciprocal. These lines are perpendicular. So when they're already in this y equals mx plus b format, that's all you have to do. You compare them, you say, are these the same? Are they opposite reciprocals? If they are neither the same nor opposite reciprocals, then you're going to write neither as your answer. They are not parallel, they are not perpendicular, they're neither. Okay, now, is where we get into the exceptions or the complications. The first complication they're going to throw your way is that they're not going to give you the line in this format. They're going to give it in another format and expect you to know how to convert it. For example, negative 3x plus 2y equals 4 and 2x plus 3y equals 24. The easiest way to do this is to convert both of them back into this y equals mx plus b format. So for our first one, which I'm gonna write in blue over here, negative three x plus two y equals four. To solve for y, to get y by itself, first I'm going to get rid of this minus three x by adding three x to both sides. That gets me two y equals three x plus four. Now this is being, y is being multiplied by two, so I'm going to divide everything by two. And that leaves me with y equals three halves x plus two. Okay, so now it's in y equals mx plus b format. Then my other one, oh, let's make it green. Okay, so then the other one, two x plus three y, well, let's move this a little, there we go equals 24. I'm going to first subtract 2x from both sides. So I'm trying to get y by itself. Then it's going to be 3y on the left equals negative 2x plus 24. Then I'm going to divide everything by 3 because there's that 3 next to the y and I want to um, get rid of that 3. And I am left with y equals negative two thirds x plus eight. Now they are both in slope intercept form. That's the name of this, slope intercept form. And now that they're both in slope intercept form, I can compare. So I have three halves and negative two thirds. Those are opposite reciprocals. These lines are perpendicular. So that's gonna be the process. If you're given it, if you're given the lines in a format that is not it's not easy to see what the slope is. Put it into this slope intercept form and then you can see it quite easily. One of the last things they'll do is a little tricky kind of things is when you have like y equals four and x equals two. Are these parallel, perpendicular, or neither? And you're like, wait, but those don't have, how do I know the slope of these? These are horizontal and vertical lines. Here we go. Let's do our nice little xy graph there. And y equals four would be right there. That's a horizontal line. And x equals two would be right about there. And as you can see, those are perpendicular to each other. 
when you have y equals something and x equals something, those are perpendicular. If you are given where they are both y equals something, like if they were both like say y equals two and y equals five, or if they were both x's, if it was x equals seven and x equals 50, it doesn't matter. If they're both x's or both y's, those are parallel because then they're either going to be both vertical or both horizontal lines. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, if it was helpful, useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.